Wait, slow down. Is that a blue bar on the healing meter? Yes, champagne for everybody. Because I tell you what, we can restore those green bars like trucks on steroids and boast access to probably the second most powerful raid cooldown in game. Not to mention the buff spam we seem to give from our totem. Yes. After a long wait, Resto Shamis are probably one of the most versatile healing classes you can think of. With their very unique active regen mechanics, they are definitely something you need to look out for. In this guide, I'm going to be showing you the basics to Resto Shamis. This includes all of our spells, so I'll be telling you about their different specs, when to be using your spells, when to be using your cooldowns, and I'll be telling you about the two most effective ways to currently play a Resto Shaman. So for starters with your totems, you should to be honest should be putting down any totems that your raid doesn't currently have as a raid buff and this includes keeping your healing stream totem down So, for totems, as I said, you're always going to want to keep your healing stream up all this is going to do is heal everybody in your party for about 1k every 2 seconds so obviously you know this just helps keep your healing going no matter what now when you drop a mana tide totem which is a, on a 3 minute cooldown and it grants you 200% of your spirit to everybody in the group for 12 seconds or about 16 if you have it talented which you should bear in mind that dropping a mana tide totem will replace your healing stream totem so I suggest using this macro here so that as soon as you've dropped down your mana tide totem you can pop down a healing stream straight after with the same button okay now we'll move on to the spells for starters we have our three single target healing spells healing wave greater healing wave and healing surge now it's worth noting that all three of these spells benefit from a buff that you gain from your riptide called tidal waves Every time you cast Riptide, which is a 6 second cooldown healing over time effect that is also very efficient, you gain 2 stacks of the buff, enabling you to spend it on any of these spells. So, as you can see we're already forming a single target healing rotation, Riptide, and then we can pick between 2 of any of these other single target healing spells. Now obviously Healing Wave is our very efficient, small heal, Greater Healing Wave is our bigger heal. It's more mana intensive but still slightly efficient. Healing Surge is our very very fast high chance to crit heal. Healing Surge should not be used much at all, it's simply an emergency spell. You should avoid using it at all costs. Next up are our AoE healing spells. Chain Heal and Healing Rain. Healing Rain is a spell that you put on the floor. You've probably seen it cast a lot of times throughout this video and all is it does is it heals people for a certain amount every 2 seconds. The amount depends on how many people are standing within the healing rain, but generally it will heal the entire group of people inside it for about 16,000 every 2 seconds. This lasts for 10 seconds and costs 10,000 mana, so we're looking at about 16 healing done for every 1 mana, that's pretty efficient. Healing Rain however does have a very high overhealing chance because if someone is standing within your Healing Rain that is already healed up to full then you know that amount is just being wasted so you've got to make sure you're only popping it on people where there is a group of people that are on lower health. Your Chain Heal however is what I like to think of as a smart heal. Chain Heal will bounce to the lowest health party members within range. This range is about 8 yards. So if I cast it on you for example and your lower health, and there's someone standing next to you that's on lower health, it will go from you and bounce off to them. It will then bounce off from them to another couple of people. It hits 4 targets in total. Now this is quite a low mana cost. It costs us about 4.5k mana which is pretty nice and usually does about 30,000 healing. So it's not as efficient as healing rain but it's more efficient than our single target healing spells. Bear in mind that casting a chain heal also gives us two charges of tidal waves, the buff that we mentioned earlier. Now as you probably know from playing a shaman, you have certain shields you can use. We're going to be interested in water shield and earth shield. Now water shield is a self buff with three charges. It gives you a passive mana regen which you ought to glyph if you're having any form of mana issues. 
In fact, I suggest getting this glyph anyway, because extra mana can be spent on extra healing, as you know. Wood Shield has three charges, and every time you hit by a direct attack, you lose one of these charges, but gain a slight amount of mana. You're going to want to keep track of this, so make sure you're constantly looking up at your buffs, or get an add-on to show you when your Water Shield has dropped off so you can reapply it. Your Earth Shield is something that you're going to want to put on a tank. What your Earth Shield will do, is every time the target takes direct damage, it'll heal them for about 5 or 6k. This effect can crit, however it does have a slight internal cooldown. So your Earth Shield will probably end up healing a tank for about 5 or 6k every 5 or 6 seconds. It's worth keeping up on the tank, because it can provide a substantial amount of healing over the course of its duration. And you can simply refresh it when it drops off the tank, or change the target that it's on if you want. Just be sure not to spam Earth Shield too much, as it can waste quite a lot of mana. Now next thing we're going to look at is one talent. Now one talent may not seem to make much of a difference for most classes, but in Resto Shaman's case, these two points change the play style of your Resto Shaman completely. This talent is called Chalurate Currents. Now this is pretty self explanatory. When your lightning bolt gives your mana back equal to 40% of the damage dealt. So if I lightning bolt and it hits 10k, it will give me 4k mana back. Now you can expect an average geared resto chamois lightning bolts to be hitting about 8k. So taking 8k as a baseline, minus the mana cost of the lightning bolt in the first place, you should be profiting about 2k mana off every cast. And remember it can crit, so on crits, you'll be profiting about maybe 6 or 7k mana. Also, on fights such as Warlords on Oz, or Hagara, or Madness of Deathwing that all have damage increasing times, you can spam Lightning Bolt, pop a couple of haste cooldowns, and regain absolutely insane amounts of mana. As you can see in this clip here, you can probably see my mana bar staying reasonably high, in fact it's even going up, yet on my real time healing graph, I'm still pulling about 50k HPS. This is because I'm spamming Chain Heal and Healing Rain, and in between this, I'm casting Lightning Bolt. Because Deathwing is casting Cataclysm, every time I cast Lightning Bolt, I get about 20k mana back. As you can see here, in a single Warmaster fight which typically lasts maybe about 5 minutes, I regain 200k mana off my Chalurate Currents. To regain 200k mana, I casted Lightning Bolt 56 times, so on average, I regained about 4k mana every Lightning Bolt. Now, if you are specking into Chalurate Currents, your stat priority should look something like this. Intellect, then Spirit, up to whichever point you feel comfortable with, but I wouldn't go above about 3500, including your trinkets stacked up that is. Then Haste, then Mastery, and then finally Crit. There is however another style of playing a Resto Shami, and this is without taking Chalurate Currents. What this style of Resto Shami will generally do, is stack Intellect, then Spirit, Spirit to maybe a cap of about 4.2k this time, followed by Mastery, then they usually pick between Haste or Crit. These are usually very very efficient ways of healing, and because you don't need to have 100% uptime spamming your lightning bolt, it can be easier to play. You will also be getting some massive massive heals because you've stacked mastery on people that are lower health, but at the same time you won't have the same amount of mana regen, so you'll find yourself pretty much, you'll do your riptide and you'll be spamming healing waves and chain heals everywhere, trying not to use greater healing wave or healing rain if possible. So, the last 9 minutes have been absolutely cram packed with a guide full of how to play a complete spec. So, if you don't all have it, you know, I don't blame you, you can watch it again. Or if you do have it, check over my advanced Resto Shami guide. And, you know, maybe you can push yourself right to the top. Good luck guys, like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for watching.